A bit of a disclaimer before we get into the video. I'm going to be looking terrible. I'm also going to be showing and talking about blood and other gross things, as well as talking about weight loss and eating and all of these things could be triggering for some people. So if that's you, probably don't watch this video. I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. So over a number of years, I had two different dentists tell me that at some point in time, I would have to get my bottom two wisdom teeth out. So one of my wisdom teeth was partially erupted, meaning that it had come up most of the way, but there was still a little bit of gum sort of hanging around it. And it would frequently get food trapped in it, even though I brush my teeth twice a day and I think I do a pretty good job. And as a result of that, I would often and get infections it would be quite painful and very annoying and then on the other side my wisdom tooth was horizontal and while that was not causing me any agony at this point in time it was pressing on my back molars my mom and dad paid a lot of money for me to get braces and have beautiful teeth so it was potentially moving my teeth around and it was probably better to just get them both out. So I booked in to get both wisdom teeth removed in the dentist chair, meaning that I wouldn't be put under, but I would be given some sort of pain medication. So I booked in for a Monday and the first thing that they got me to do was get um, a x-ray of my jaw just to double check that where the tooth the teeth were placed and everything like that and then after a while they got me to go into the actual dentist office operating room whatever you want to call it um, the first thing that they did was inject a numbing agent into the inside of my mouth they didn't put it into the gum but they would put the needle in and then kind of move it around in all different directions to numb not only the outside of my mouth but also my gum and my lip and they would do like one side and get all that done and then move on to the second side now while the needle itself didn't hurt per se, the fact that it was in there for quite some time and moving around meant that it was just really quite uncomfortable. And then once that whole side of my face was numb, that's when they actually got stuck into removing the tooth. Now straight up, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat this, for me, it was like a really terrifying experience because I had two sets of hands in my mouth and like four different tools in my mouth. I had the water gun, I had some, which was making its own noises. I had like something making sucking noises. I had this terrible drill type thing making these disgusting like whirring noises which I can only imagine was like cutting up my gum and chopping my tooth into little bits and pieces so that they could be removed. I also heard this revolting crack of the teeth um, and then at some point they would be putting this I don't know what to describe it as, but like this wrench-like object on my part of my tooth, twisting it around so that it became really tight, pressing into my jaw, which would add like pressure to my like whole mouth region. And then I guess using it to pry out the piece of tooth. So while, yes, my mouth was numb during this entire process, just like the sounds and the general feeling and tension and pressure of it all was really quite scary, to be quite honest. And yeah, even though I wasn't in pain, for some reason, like my anxiety just kicked in and my legs were actually shaking the entire time. And the only thing that sort of kept me focused was the dentist kept on telling me to open my mouth wider. So in my mind, I just kept repeating, 
Open your mouth wider, wider, wider. Keep your mouth wide, <laughs> keep your mouth open. And that was like the thing that sort of kept me focused during the entire time. So once they had, you know, removed the tooth and the little bits and pieces, um, they sewed it up and then gave me some gauze um, and some ice packs. The dentist then also gave me some antibacterial mouthwash. Um, and the whole process of getting the x-ray and then the two teeth removed probably took about 50 minutes and for me it cost $1,400 although my sister got the same thing done two wisdom teeth x-ray and it cost her $2,100 but she got hers done in Wollongong whereas I got mine done in Vincennia which is obviously a smaller town so I feel like it really does just depend where you go as to how much it costs and if you did get it done um, like in a hospital and you were knocked out that would probably jack up your price as well. So after the procedure, um, I went to the chemist. I had been prescribed pain medication and antibiotics. And thankfully my mum had come up and she drove me back down to Ulladulla to take care of me for the day. So at this point, my whole mouth, lips, everything was still numb, like the numbing agent hadn't worn off. So I wasn't in any pain, I was just quite uncomfortable. Um, so I decided to spend the whole rest of the day just laid up on the lounge with my ice packs on, just chilling out, watching some Netflix. Around four o'clock, which was like about four hours later, I could start to feel my mouth and my lips and everything, all the numbing had wore off. And the dentist told me I wasn't able to drink anything until that happened. So I decided that I was going to take out my gauze, which was incredibly bloody and soggy and gross and actually have my first sips of water. And by this point I was super dehydrated, so I really wanted some water, but it was also quite uncomfortable to drink. So you'll see me like doing really pathetic sips of the water. Um, during this time, I also took my first dose of the antibiotics and the pain medication, and I wasn't allowed to eat anything for this day. So thankfully I did have a big hearty breakfast at the start of the day to kind of try and tire me over. That night, mum gave me like an old hand towel to put over my pillow um, because I did end up drooling and like having sort of blood stains all over it. And the sleep was just absolutely terrible. Um, I had the gauze in and I probably sh shouldn't have um, just because I felt like having the gauze in while trying to sleep meant you know increased saliva and then as I was trying to swallow the saliva it just was very difficult to do especially when I was laying back I did try and have like a pillow like a thicker pillow to try and prop myself up because that's what was suggested but even still it was just not a very good first night's sleep now we're moving on to the next day and I woke up absolutely with a blown out face. So this is where like all of the swelling really comes in and this is also where all the pain came in as well because um, all of the numbing had worn off and you know things were starting to heal but I was in a lot of pain. So I was encouraged to eat some breakfast but obviously at this point you can't have anything where you need to chew so you need sort of liquids or foods that are just mushy and you can easily just slide down your throat so i tried eating a fruit puree and could only take like little really pathetic spoonfuls of it but i've got to say after not eating for 24 hours i was absolutely starving and this fruit puree just went down a treat. During this day, I decided not to use any of my gauze at all. I wanted to sort of 
give the wounds some exposure to oxygen and give them that time and space to heal. I also started drinking a lot more water and trying to get some food into me. So in addition to my breakfast puree, I also had a soup that I had to have for lunch and for dinner because I just found the process of eating it at this point was a bit challenging. It was really hard to move my jaw and obviously my teeth were, well, the sockets were in a lot of pain. And that night, the sleep was even worse than the night before. Um, for some reason, like during those like nighttime sleeping hours, even though I was taking my pain medication, just the rush of all, it felt like a rush of blood to my face and like my face and my jaw and my teeth were just pounding. Um, so it was just like a really uncomfortable experience and just made it so difficult to sleep. The next day, now we're on to Wednesday, um, I decided to go back up home and you can tell that one side of my face is slowly starting to decrease in its inflammation, but the other side is still quite inflamed. I was still trying to eat little bits and pieces, so my yogurt, my water, fresh squeezed um, orange juice, my soups, my puree, different things like that, trying to get something into me. And I was still in a lot of pain, so I was still taking my pain medication. But what I was finding was that because I wasn't eating a substantial amount and I was taking some strong pain medication, I was finding myself no, feeling just like incredibly drowsy and dizzy. And I know that when my sister got her wisdom teeth out, she just could not stomach the pain medication and it was actually making her throw up, which probably made the whole pain and the whole process a whole heap worse. For me, I could stomach it. It wasn't making me throw up, but I just knew that I wasn't actually getting in enough food to sort of stomach the pain medication. So I decided to try and decrease the strength and just go on to regular Nurofen. So I was still getting some pain relief, but just not as strong. And I definitely found when I transitioned over to that, I wasn't getting as dizzy. I was trying to take it easy, resting, relaxing, but also I had things to do. And you know, even just the process of hanging out a load of washing was just really challenging because I was just getting super dizzy and lightheaded um, from not eating enough, which I couldn't eat. I couldn't chew, I could barely eat anything. Um, and my nights were still sleepless. So by the end of the day, you've got a really cranky Carly. I'm hungry, I'm in pain, and I haven't had sleep for nights on end. So not a very good experience. It's Friday afternoon and it's been five days since I got my wisdom teeth out and I actually need to go back to the dentist pretty well tonight because I don't know if you can tell, but this side of my face, all the swelling's gone down, the tooth or the socket at the back feels fine. This side of my face, there is a big, hard, sore, like sack for lack of a better word. I don't know if it's got blood in it, fluid in it, pus in it, like what's in it, but it's um, kind of preventing me from talking properly, opening my mouth, moving my jaw, my head, my neck. It can be very painful. And I think that maybe the wisdom tooth socket at the back there has um, like become a dry socket, meaning that a blood clot doesn't form and there's no protection for the bone or the nerves. Um, so I need to go back. I'm really quite nervous to go back simply because Monday it was like so scary and ordeal and like painful process and I really just don't want to have to go through that again. But they said that like it's really important for it to get checked out and that if it is a dry socket for them to clean it out, pack it with some gauze, stitch it back up again. Sorry, Mackie's moving around. Um, and like it won't heal on its own otherwise. So that's what we're doing this afternoon and hopefully I can give you guys a bit of an update tomorrow and we're back on the mend and things will be looking up. It's now Saturday, 
six days since I've had my wisdom teeth out and after going to the dentist last night I just want to give you guys a bit of an update so he checked both sides and said that they're looking good that the stitches are still intact and I asked what this big hard sack was and he said that it was blood that had obviously pulled up you know during the process and hasn't dispersed back out into the body yet i can actually feel at night time blood just like little bits of blood kind of oozing out of the hole the wound from um this right wisdom tooth so after being prescribed some stronger antibiotics, I started taking those. I really started trying my best to increase my food intake, increase my water intake, and get some good night's sleep. And I definitely noticed that the side of my face started to decrease. I was still experiencing some pain and discomfort. And then going back to school and having to talk all day while wearing a mask, really made it such a challenge and honestly by the end of the day i was having to take some more pain medication just because my jaw and my gums were killing me so flash forward to now which is almost two weeks after my wisdom teeth removal i've started eating solid food i can chew just not that great um and i still have like sockets which food does get trapped into and it's really gross and annoying because no matter like if I drink water after eating, if I brush my teeth, if I use my mouthwash, I can tell by shining my little foam torch in there that I've still got food trapped in there and that does worry me because I know that having food trapped in parts of your teeth can lead to infection and I really do not want my wisdom teeth sockets to get infected again and for me to have to go through this whole process. I also have noticed that, you know, from not eating properly for a whole week and a half, that I have lost a lot of weight, particularly around like my face, the top of my chest and my hips. And I just feel, you know, from not having exercise, not eating properly, I really just feel sluggish and like not myself. So I'm definitely keen to, you know, start getting my healthy food on, taking some probiotics to combat, you know, uh, the antibiotics that I had to, had to take and really just get my gut health going great again. Obviously, I wasn't able to exercise during that whole time because I wasn't eating enough to warrant exercise. So I'm really sort of interested in getting back into routine, getting my health back because I feel like it wasn't just my teeth that got taken out. It was like a whole heap of other routines and systems and whatnot in my life that had been impacted by this process. So if I could go back and do it all again, I'm actually not sure if I would. The process of getting them out, the process of recovery, and even now two weeks later still not being right, um, and then just the financial cost of everything. Um, I don't know necessarily for me if it was worth it. And I definitely would say to people, unless you have to get your wisdom teeth out, don't just do it for fun, because it's certainly not going to be a fun experience. You're also going to want to take at least a week off of work because thankfully I had school holidays and I got mine done in the school holidays but I would not recommend just getting it done on the Friday taking the Friday off work and expecting the weekend that you'll recover and be ready to go by Monday. Maybe you will. I sort of anticipated originally that it would only take me a couple of days to recover, but you just don't know whether you're gonna get an infection or not, or how long the healing process is going to take for you. I mean, I was doing all of the right things. I was doing, you know, my mouthwash. I was brushing my teeth gently. I was trying to eat, drink water, rest. I did my ice packs that day. Like I was doing all the right things and I still got an infection. So 
you just never know how long it's going to take so definitely schedule some time off work um, if you guys have any questions or comments or want to know more about like a particular aspect of my experience make sure that you leave them down below obviously this is just a story time this is just my experience no advice happening here because I'm not a doctor or a dentist but I hope you guys at least enjoyed, found this interesting. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I don't usually put out content like this. It's normally things like cleaning, organization, lifestyle, and more fun, positive type stuff. So if that's your jam, make sure you subscribe. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.